Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there in Revolution Land, I thank you so much for joining us uh, with my great friend, Chris Granger, the CEO of IWC, a great innovator, a great uh, architect, and a great architect of a brand as well, specifically IWC. Um, he's joining us at a very early hour in, I would imagine, Schaffhausen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, I was not shy to ask him for this because I have seen him running at an ungodly speed before on a treadmill in, uh, in, in Mexico City during CR at 7 or even 6.30 in the morning. So, Chris, how are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you. And now that you mention it, I just actually, um, on Friday, I met on Clubhouse somebody from Mexico City who's going to take me running and biking next time because I can't get past security normally, but he told me there's ways and there's safe places to do it. So next time we're in Mexico City for CR, uh, we can enjoy the fresh air, hopefully. Oh, that'd be lovely. No more sharing the three treadmills between 250 people out there on the top floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, like, like it clearly didn't affect you, but there was a lot of people that were affected by the high altitude. Yeah, and there was well, like, I feel that for sure, definitely. Yes, yes, I, I felt it badly. And then I looked over and there's just some dudes just walking really slowly. And yeah. I'm like, bro, you've got to get off the treadmill. It's just not going to do anything. And there's people waiting. Uh, <laughs> you really <laughs> notice it when you walk up, you know, from the high rise buildings up to the heli decks and you have to do a couple of flights of stairs. You really notice it then. Uh, it's definitely a different altitude. But in summer, it's all right. It's just in the winter months. Yeah, yeah, we do go high, but it's only skiing down. So you don't really, it's not really cool <laughs> exercise, is it? Well, on the subject of high altitude, sir, on the subject of going high, I yes. believe. What an intro. Eight a pilot's watch or so several pilots watches to talk about yeah. um, but there has been a very significant extension to the big pilot watch family this year in a slightly different size with a design that's kind of old school in terms of its purity purity and with an all new movement chris can yeah. you tell us a little bit about the new watches yeah no thank you i think you 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 hit the nail on the head you know iwc has this long, long tradition in making pilots watches uh, for 85 years, going back all the way back to 1936. And the family that owned IWC back in the day, the Homburgers, they had sons who qualified as uh, pilots in Croydon, south of London. And they came back from their pilot's license and said, Dad, we really need a special watch for pilots. And that's really how our story in pilot's watches started. And then today's DNA really goes back to two different designs. You have the military service watch, the issue watch for the Royal Air Force, the Mark 11 from 1948, which we produced all the way into the 80s. And then, of course, the observation watch um, back from 1940. And this 55 millimeter behemoth is really, for me, the, the absolute essence of kind of the purest form follows function IWC approach in the sense that everything about this watch was single mindedly geared towards making a very reliable observation watch. So huge diameter, full loom dial. You had that protruding crown to be operated by thick gloves. You had that uh, strap with the rivets that was worn over the flight suit. The watch couldn't actually fall off. And that over time, of course, then is re-established by RBC back in 2002 uh, in the luxury watch market. And there it became really not any longer purely a professional pilot's watch, but something that expressed this utilitarian lifestyle, that kind of ruggedness, that active mindset, and really started partly started that oversized watch trend we, we've seen over the next 10 or 15 years or so. And that's really defined sort of the DNA of our pilot's watches today, the Chronos from the 1990s. We mentioned the 3705, the first ceramic Chrono, which was so iconic. And then really that big pilot DNA, um, which we've had continuously in production now since 2002. And what we're doing now is that we are taking these iconic designs and we're adding to it um, sizes and executions really to improve some of the key features. And I think you, you spoke about it. Yes, it's, it's that pilot's design, but of course you have people around the globe with slender wrists and people who ergonomically weren't quite able to wear this 46 millimeter big pilot. And that's why we said, okay, on the one hand, let's go back to the purity of the original big pilot, but not in a retro way, but just distilling it down to the essence, full loom dial, no date, no power reserve. And then a 43 millimeter diameter and that's really been a series of long studies and, and proportion exercises to see how we can create something which sits well on everybody's wrist, but at the same time has the, the wear feel, the instrument feel, and the proportions of a big pilot. So it's not just a case of scaling it down proportionally. You have to really play with the different case heights and case dimensions to have something which instantly looks like a big pilot, but has that 43 millimeter diameter, is a bit uh, lower on the wrist, scaling the crown so the skin doesn't feel the crown anymore and so on and the second part of the exercise is really upgrading in terms of movement 82 caliber open case back increased water resistance and now our new quick change system that allows you to really change very simply with a touch of a button between 
leather strap, metal bracelet, rubber strap, and so on, given really that great versatility of a modern sports watch. And the second pillar you mentioned is really the Chronograph 41. It's an upgrade of our existing Chronograph 43 with our in-house 69 caliber Chronograph movement, and then many of the same principles and features. You have, again, quick change, open case back, uh, 10 bar, 100 meter waterproofing, and great dial colors with that classic RWC blue and that really, really nice uh, a green that, that plays so, so beautifully in the light. So it's really taking that aviation heritage, taking the uh, iconic DNA design codes, but upgrading it to really versatile modern sports watches. Amazing. You know, when, when I had the 43mm uh, Big Pilot's watch on my wrist, yeah. um, I had selected the bracelet version of it. And I know it's interesting because, you know, people have this conversation with you all the time because it's, um, you know, bracelets are a big, big part of the watch business today, integrated yeah. bracelet watches. Um, and you have some, but not as, you know, not a huge amount. Yeah. And this watch was really interesting that, first of all, the bracelet fit it very well. And second of all, it was fantastically realized in particular because of this quick adjustment system yeah. to make the bracelet slightly larger or smaller yeah. just by pressing that IWC in the center. Yeah, of the, the fine adjustment on the back, yeah. Phenomenal, phenomenal. That was, I mean, and, and that's something I really struggled with and to have that was so uh, brilliant and so intuitive. And then the fact you can just take it out and swap it with a leather strap whenever yeah. you feel like that, so that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and as you say, you know, it's on a 46 millimeter big pilot in stainless steel, the straight bracelet we used to have on the chronos would have been very very heavy so we've created this tapered design that wears a lot lighter i think the big pilot 43 on bracelet is like 157 grams or thereabouts so it's absolutely wearable when you look then at the other materials that are going to come anything towards titanium serotonium even even lighter in the end and you have now a watch that is a big pilot that is on bracelet and that still has the ergonomics and wearability that you're looking for so i think that's really a good compromise that we couldn't quite achieve at 46 millimeter and steel Amazing. Uh, Chris, you had mentioned uh, the famous 3705 from 1994, uh, yes. the world's first uh, luxury zirconium dioxide watch. Uh, it is a, a part of legend. I know in a Phillips auction recently, uh, yeah. Mr. Blumlein's wife's personal watch was sold for a staggering amount of money. I was trying to bid on it, but I was not successful. Me too. I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear that you have um, going, are going to make a lot of collectors super happy because you're bringing the icon back. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's that story. I mean, it's always a watch that's been very, very close to my heart. I think our, our history in ceramics and titanium particularly has been a very strong part of IWC. We've always been researching robust materials, mastering that you know, notoriously difficult machining process and sintering process of ceramic because that's obviously titanium as well, highly flammable. It's not a material that's uh, very easy to machine and work. So that's an expertise we've built up over many, many years at IWC. And then the idea was to take this, this very, very pure, iconic uh, IWC design, but upgrading it in every single respect. So once again, we now have our own material, serotanium, which is that ceramic infused titanium that gets machined here in Schaffhausen like titanium. And then there's a secret kiln firing process that turns the components into a complete and lasting black finish. So you have the scratch resistance of ceramics, but the shutterproofing basically of the fracture resistance of titanium and wow. giving you that all black design. And of course, when you look at the 3705 originally, it had uh, probably stainless steel pushes and crown on because those components you can't make in ceramic. And right. the titanium, we're able to actually complete the design in a sense and, and finish it as a full black watch. And then, of course, also the upgrade from the Etavaldu from back in the day to our 69 in-house chronograph movement. And I think all around, that's really a watch that in 41 mil in black wears so beautifully small on the wrist, but at the same time has that presence of really that very, you know, boxy 90s design, which uh, I adore, especially with a calf leather strap. And it reminds me really, I mean, when I thought of this watch, it really reminds me of uh, of the Mercedes uh, Evo 2, uh, 190 Evo 2. So <laughs> that, you know, a decent big wing on the back, that boxy design, you know, and then oh, the yeah. black leather seats, you know, walnut dash and all of that. It's yeah. just it's just something so essentially 90s about this kind of expression of pure like performance uh, mixed with a bit of uh, a good old 90s taste. So um, it's an exciting piece. Uh, you know, I love it, um, I, and uh, I I have. Very thankfully, I have had the opportunity to order one, and I always think that's a good sign when journalists, who are usually pretty cheap, you get mine, uh, you get yours before I get mine, probably. It's guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, at least. When they, I'm when, when, when forty-four on order, so we'll see. Oh wow! Uh, when, when there's, when journalists actually want to buy watches, it's an incredible thing. And I'll, I'll just to. First of all, say thank you, but all myself and both of my editors in the U.S., um, Banu based in Texas and Adam 
who's our editor at large and who founded Red Bar, all three of us ordered one. Uh, we're so excited by this watch. One thing I have to I really say, I also respect the fact that even though you you took an iconic design from the 90s, you you modernized it using serotanium, and it's so cool to see the pushers and crown matching it. Yeah. You've got the modern movement in it, which is then doesn't have that, you know, Balju 7750 wobble, which is yes. always nice. And, and, and you but can I also get the date and all, at all hours of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also love the fact that you made the like a super luminous dial, and then you didn't you didn't use the the vintage style loom. You went yeah. pure white, which I think was exactly the way to go, right? Yeah. Like, no, thank you. No, we're excited, definitely. That's uh, it's one of those pieces. It also fits my personal collection really well, so <laughs> we're getting some. <somewhere. laughs> so, so you know, back to the big pilot. Um, you know, I remember when the first big pilot perpetual calendar watches came out. Like, I think there were the, the sort of like stealth release limited editions, right? Yeah. Like, I think there was one at Wempe, and there was one at Sincere here in Titanium. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this. You're trying watches, to track all of those down. <laughs> they're sick. They're so nice, right? And um, and I was like. God, I love this. And then I love the fact that you finally, you know, started offering that watch in the regular production series, especially in that, you know, sort of ceramic case, which yeah. which made it so cool. But I like the the version that you've done this year also in the steel case with the blue dial, which, yeah. um, you know, from a visibility perspective is great, but also it's just great looking, you know? Yeah, I, I was really surprised by this one because, you know, following the, the, the rodeo drive, which is sort of the blue dial and the black uh, ceramic case, and then when you pop it on the stainless steel, it's actually really, really a nice uh, contrast. Maybe we can go on the uh, split down camera quickly and see, you know, when you have them uh, side by side, oh, I just need to focus. It's Monday morning for the camera oh, as nice. well. You know, it, it adds such a nice pop to have the, uh, the steel case on it. And I love it. Really beautiful finish on the back, you know, with that polished case ring, that big seven days power reserve, 52 caliber movement. And then combined with that kind of casual riveted contrast stitching dark blue strap, I think it's just, for me, that is a, actually, I really like this as a as a, the one PPC you have to choose as a sports watch. I think it'd be this one for me because the versatility is great. You can wear it with anything. And it just has the right mix between that, that instrument high end feel of the perpetual calendar and the sportiness of the big pilot. So I think that's, it's a really nice one. Well, you know, I mean, again, that's that's down to IWC. You guys uh, innovated the the functional kind of sporty perpetual calendar, right? And again, it was thanks to Kirk Klaus and you know uh, and his perpetual calendar completely synchronized. But uh, I remember back in back in the day, my very first perpetual calendar was um, a GST perpetual calendar in titanium. Yes, with this is the other thing. I speak to a lot of people at the moment who are actually still wearing these very actively, and you don't see them really around that much. But when you actually start speaking to people who are into watches, it's quite a few people who still have a GST perpetual and wear it for sports and all sorts. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. It's such never, a dope watch. I never owned one, but there are some cool ones. There's definitely there's the, uh, the 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 blue and white and red dial, if I remember, on that one, which is yeah. like a full steel version. That's quite cool as well. And then in the words of Wiz Khalifa, there's the black and yellow, black and yellow, black and, and yellow. That, that <laughs> and that one is that one is dope, bro. It's I'm so sure nice. There's a salmon colored version there, but what's up? <laughs> yeah, probably. So I got okay. So I got to ask you, uh, you know, Chris. Um, I feel the need, the need for speed, and I, of course, I'm referring to Top Gun. Yeah. And uh, let's first talk about uh, two very beautiful big pilots that are a follow up to the uh, Mojave Top Gun chronograph that you had back in 2019. Yeah. Um, I love this, I guess, sand or cocky ceramic. But yeah, tell us yeah. about the watches, please. Yeah, this really came about when we started to really actively, you know, as one of my first things I wanted to do when I took over this job at IWC was really to build our relationship with the U.S. Navy and make sure we really have close ties to the community. And we started with the first Top Gun SFTI watch and started to meet the squadrons. We extended then our license to actually be able to work with all of the different components of the Navy. And since then, we've done a whole series now of, of military exclusive professional pilots watches, four different squadrons, both at home and forward deployed, and then many of the Allied Air Forces as well, ranging all the way, all the way from Australia now to, to Europe and all over the place. And, and really from that, we had the first meetings. I remember I went out to Naval Air Station in China Lake, actually, and, and after the meeting, after the day, I was inspired where people go and train uh, fast low flying in the canyons. As, uh, mystical place called Rainbow Canyon or Star Wars Canyon, which is that canyon system in the Mojave Desert where they're flying lower than the uh, top of the, uh, the, the canyon floor, which is fantastic. Wow. And uh, it's one of the, you know, there's actually a merge in there. And I think it's the only place in the world where you basically have a T-junction 
in an area where jets are flying at uh, nearly supersonic speeds through low canyons. You don't have that anywhere else. And then you have to kind of radio the air traffic controller asking if somebody's coming from the right <laughs> when they give the all clear <laughs> and actually merge into the main canyon. I mean, that must be hair raising when that goes wrong. But anyway, you know, I saw a lot of the um, desert colored flight equipment and a lot of the military equipment. It's like different materials, but all sort of tone in tone. And I drove back and I thought, we've got to do something and start building these ceramic colors based on, on the equipment we see. And it's obviously something we also find in sneakers today. You know, there's been many sort of Amex ex executions in this style. And I really thought this would be something that brings the world of military Top Gun and sort of almost fashion like together in a sense. And I drove back and I thought, well, we're going to call this series. And I had to stop for some gas. And it just said sort of Mojave Texaco on the sign. And I said, well, there we are. It's going to be Mojave Desert. And that's how it started. And we did the chronograph. It was a huge hit and sold out immediately. And uh, so we're following up now. But we do it in a very sort of uh, controlled and collectible way. So we do the perpetual calendar with a double moon indication in the same execution. And we make 150 of those per year. We're limiting the production. And then a big pilot in 46 millimeter in the same execution in for 250 pieces a year that we're making with a new improved strap that is uh, textile inlay tone in tone on a, on a rubber base, but otherwise that same color code on the on the Mojave dial. And that's going to be the, the first one of a start of different series, if you like, that explore these different colors that come out of the military context of our US Navy friends. Oh, that's awesome. No, I love that watch. And it is really cool to see that um, uh, Top Gun uh, Mojave Big Pilot Perpetual Calendar next to the steel blue dialed watch because yeah. it goes to, it shows you such two different executions yeah, of, of the same complication. You know, like one is super absolutely. stealth and the other one's like really kind of like dressy and and, and casual chic. Yeah. You know, but perfect. But that's again is is something that really strikes me. Like some of the um, military pilots you work with, they're really looking for that military black subdued anti-reflective banging around the cockpit serotonin type thing and then others they're really going for something that is a lot more sort of style so we saw that when we started right. the on the top gun instructors 50th anniversary they wanted you know blue dial blue leather strap with their baby blue signature color lining and stitching you know wow. nice sort of stainless steel case bit of sort of swagger and we just now we're just doing our first ever pilots chrono military in bronze so we literally there's there's literally a marine corps squadron that's going for that um, desert green uh, khaki and bronze look, which is fantastic. Oh, lovely. Yes. But again, you know, there's no uh, professional pilot's military explanation to go for bronze at all, but you know, this, the watch is absolutely stunning. So again, it's nice to see that even in the professional community, you have everything from fully functional subdued to a little bit of a stylistic expression. And I think it's that variety that I absolutely love about these projects. Absolutely. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's early in the year, but you've killed it already. Absolutely smashed it with such beautiful watches. You've already made me poor as well because uh, the oh, year just started and I've already bought a watch from you, but that's fine. You know, I'm okay. I'm happy. That's, that's my life, you know? <laughs> so the year just started, I've already ordered two watches. One is yours and then what yeah. is the Enter Series Paddock Nautilus, the 5711? Oh, yeah. yes. okay. So I think so, that bankrupted you probably more than us, but... <laughs> I, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to have to find a second job. <laughs> but but, but thank, thank you, you so much. No, and, thank you. Stay safe and speak to you very soon. Oh, wait, Cheers. hang on. Let me, show, let me introduce yeah. you to the latest oh, member of the Come on. Can I introduce you to... Johnny Revolution. Bandit! Well, anyway, Chris, thank you so much. And Bennett salutes you, and I salute you too. Thank I'll you. Salute you back. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. All the best. Bye bye. bye.